Hello and welcome to episode 59 of the Terminus Podcast for the weeks of August 20th, 2016. I am your dispatcher, Ellis, otherwise known as Train Man. With me, my engineers are Weibold, Jader, and Milky. And with us, with us for the very first time, our guest Brakeman is Graham and Ham and Ham. Hi guys! Green Eggs and Graham. Uh, I come from the wonderful land of entrapment, New Mexico. I thought that was the land of manana. <laughs> that too. And twenty nine twenty six. Go twenty nine twenty six. Meh. I think twenty nine twenty six is overrated. All right. This is amazing. Don't care because the train will terminate Sorry. at this station. station. Okay, this week we are in trains. We're stalking the... Here we see the rare Chris Hoffman. Hoffman? How do you say his last name? Homan. Oh. Homan. Uh, uh, my inner German was saying otherwise. Anyway, <laughs> here, we are, here we are seeing Chris in trains building a thingy. Actually, I think he, What's just, thing he just he just saved his route, so I'm not sure if he's like getting out of it. Uh, oh. And trains totally locked up on him. Anyways, uh, what is going on over there? Oh, I don't know what's going on in the guest list right now. Anyways, we have some things to cover, but I have thankfully much less news than last week. So I'm going to start with something sort of goofy and interesting uh, from Gizmodo that only tangentially has to do with trains. Uh. So, did you know you can convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius using using the six line in New York City? Huh? What? Yes. Converting via subway. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, if you look at this handy dandy thingy here, if you know that uh, well, if you know that 32 degrees Fahrenheit is 0 degrees Celsius, you know that apparently approximately 33rd Street is 0 degrees Celsius, or just above. So therefore, 28th Street uh, isn't anything, but 23rd Street is negative 5 degrees Celsius. And 14th Street is negative 10 degrees Celsius. Going up, 42nd Street, uh, 41 degrees Fahrenheit is 5 degrees Celsius. Uh, 51st Street, 50 degrees Fahrenheit is 10 degrees Celsius. 59th Street is 15 degrees Celsius. So you can get these approximate estimations going up in increments of 5 degrees Celsius. Uh, on the 6th train. Hey. Which happens so, to work out quite well when you're dealing with someone from the Ukraine, uh, or from Ukraine, who doesn't really get Fahrenheit. Uh, and when you don't really get Celsius because you're a red blooded American. And you're trying to and you're trying to talk about what temperature it is, but you happen to be in New York City with your girlfriend and this Ukrainian individual. Uh, I see. Yeah. So here's my thing, though. Oh no. For people, for people using this as a legitimate means of you know learning and approximating the metric system, is it really all that much harder to learn the metric system than it is to memorize the stations on the sick? on the 6 train for the MTA well, because it, and it, then convert in, in approximate increments of 5 degrees. Well, it, I'd figure it's a lot easier because you can look at the map and say, oh, 23rd Street, that's the bottom one. Or, you know, 14th or Street, you could, that's the bottom run, it's negative 10. Well, yeah, but you need a map for that. Well, yeah, but people, but there's subway, if you happen to be in New York City, you can always look on the wall of a subway station. What if Centimeters subway is station, the real standard. Could, no. You could just pull up your phone. You could. Google. <laughs> you yeah, you could. But you have no cell service in the subway. I'm, I'm basically <laughs> proving the arguments against millennials right now. It's a very cool mnemonic. It, does it count as a mnemonic? I'm saying it counts as a mnemonic, but... I'm not sure what that is, so... It's like when you have a thing that's... Just remember oil rig. Or, oh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, like it's, it's something like... Yeah. It's a mnemonic device. Wait, no, yeah. 
Yeah. Or is that an acronym? I guess it's both. Well, it's a it's a mnemonic. Never, if you can never say it out eat, loud. Never then. eat shredded wheat. That's a mnemonic. That'd be an acronym. No, because it doesn't stand that, for that. Yeah, no, that'd, that'd be a mnemonic. The the reason I think um, oil rig would be an acronym more than it would be a mnemonic is because it does actually stand for that. <laughs> you know, it's nothing official, but it does. But but here's the here's the next level. I have this map printed on my wallet. <laughs> I I happen to have my wallet is. Uh, it's made by a company called Mighty Wallet, and it has the New York City subway map. Like, it's it's made to look like it's just the map folded up to be a wallet. Excellent. And unfortunately, my map, or my wallet, rather, is going to be uh, outdated sooner or later when they complete the Second Avenue subway. Uh, I went, Mom, I need a new wallet. She's like, why? They're going to add another station. But speaking of stations on the New York City subway, uh, while I was in New York City with Madison and this Ukrainian girl named Luba, uh, Ooh. we, Madison and I, you know, we, we went around to a bunch of places, but we rode the six train after its terminating point in Brooklyn. So we stayed on the train after it reached its final stop, and they have to go around the loop to get back and go the other direction. The Loop itself is actually one of the original subway stations built in 1904. It's probably the best-looking one on the system, but it's been closed for decades and decades. It's the City Hall mm -hmm. Loop station. And oh, so, I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, I have never sure. seen it in person. I want, you know, let's just stay on the train and ride it around and look out the windows at this thing. If the lights are on. The lights weren't on, but we were able to sort of press our faces up against the glass and see. But... The first train uh, we got on, or the first six train we rode on, we rode it down there, and then they stop, and the guy comes through the train and goes, you know, actually, everyone needs to get off, everyone needs to get off, you, sir, ma'am, get off the train, this is the last stop, uh, and I was like, but we just want to ride it around the thing, and he goes, get on the next six train, this one is running empty back to the yard, and I was like, okay, okay, that's, that's fine. And so we got off, and Madison was kind of nervous because we just got thrown off a train. <laughs> and the next six train pulls in, like, five minutes later. And we get on that. And, of course, it makes him an announcement, you know, this is, uh, this is the last stop for this train, blah, 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 blah. But nobody comes through afterwards to make sure everyone gets off, so we stayed on the train. And we were able to look out the windows as the train went around City Hall Loop, and we got this awesome view. Uh... Very and cool. Then, and then it just stopped in Brooklyn Bridge again because it wrapped back around, and people got on, and it continued like normal. <laughs> uh, I I wasn't really paying attention, but I'm sure we got some funny looks from people who were getting on to a train at its first station that already had people on it. So Maybe why is City Hall Loop Station closed? Uh, for a number of reasons. One of which being it's on a tight curve, which is just generally bad uh, for train stations in general because you have to have gap fillers. Uh, because mm -hmm. if you think about a train being, you know, a lined a, line, the gap, a yeah. series a series of tangent segments. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was about to say that it's lines tangent to a curve, so you have the doors on the ends uh, having a distance between the curve and the, or sorry, the doors in the middle in this case. I was going to say the doors on the end would actually be closer. The ones in the middle would be. Yeah, well, yeah, well, because this is an outer platform. If it was an inner platform, it'd be the other way around. Uh, yeah, but yeah. It's the doors in the middle have these nice big gaps, and so they have to use gap fillers if they wanted to use that station. They use them at the South Ferry Loop, and they use them at a couple of other stations. One of which that we went to go to, and she was like, she sees the signs for moving floors, and she's like, what does that mean? I was like, there's the gap filler right there. Keep an eye on it when the train pulls in, and she was like, oh, that's pretty cool, because it just it just extends out as a pneumatic like thunk up mm -hmm. against the side of the train. But the the other half of the the other half of the reason, it's it's a tight curve, so the you know the trains have to go slow. It's right next to the Brooklyn Bridge station, so it's kind of redundant. And also, but it's such a pretty station. It is, but also it only fits the first five cars of the ten car train. Oh, okay, that's something. <laughs> yeah, and that's the same thing at the South Ferry Loops. Uh, I wanted to visit that station as well, but we sort of wanted to get out of there, uh, get out of New York because it was getting late. 
Um, Get out of town. And, and we had a long drive back, and a, a train ride and then a drive back, because we took Metro North in from a uh, place in Connecticut. But the South Ferry Loop says that same problem. If you're on a one train going down to South Ferry, and you want to get off at South Ferry, you have to be in the first five cars. If you're in the if you're in the, the back half of the train, you can't get off. It just doesn't happen. Mm. You know. This is this is sort of out of section, but it segue. But it's a, just a random thought, and it ties in quite nicely with that. I'm suddenly rather tempted to, rather than building a Union station on the new Rails of War server, but to do a giant underground terminus sort of station. <laughs> that would that would be kind of fun. Uh, I mean, it'd be unique. It'd be a hell of a lot of work. It'd probably be cheaper. Uh, uh, I don't know about that. No. Depending. Depending. If clay is as scarce on the next server... Oh my god. <laughs> clay yeah. was a nightmare previously. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Then we got horses and everything was great. Anyways, then uh, we got a railroad through the clay pits. But you know, well, we didn't ever, we didn't ever build that. Remember, we had the switch installed and then somebody deleted the <laughs> server. Hmm. Yeah, Chris. Hmm. Not our Chris. Not this Chris. Different Chris. Yeah. Right, just oh, we yeah. Unrelated, Chris. That was my bad. I accidentally ended the call. What just happened? The heck I'm, was that? I misclicked. I see. Yeah, yeah that that was. Yeah, okay. I'm I'll back. take. Point I'll, point I'll take. I'll take the point for that. That was a misclick. Five, to, uh, five points to. Five, five points to Gryffindor. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that was that was my adventures in New York City with Madison. I got to see That's the. Fun. I got to see the Statue of Liberty for the first time in many years. I got to see my island. Nice. Uh, but yeah. I have not. Paid it a visit. I'm going to at some point. You should. I, I know. So you just show up like I own this place. My, gra my grandpa's been there. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, that's so. That place has got so much freaking history. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Anyway. Uh, speaking of things in anyways. the water. <laughs> uh oh. So, many decades ago. In fact, 106 years ago, uh, Canadian Pacific dropped a locomotive in Lake Superior by accident. God damn it. And by and by Whoops. dropped and by dropped, I mean it crashed into a rock slide, and then the train went in the lake. Uh, oh, that, that was CP. Yep. And into the Great Lakes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought. What are, what's the one I'm thinking of? It's a different one. one. <laughs> what's the? I thought there was one that was on like the East Coast. There is. You're thinking was, of you're thinking of Main Central or yeah, that's what I'm trying. Main Central thirty six sixty six or I, it might have been Boston and Main thirty six sixty six. That's what I'm thinking of. Actually, I, I think, think it was B and M. Yeah, it was it was B and M thirty six sixty six. It was the same type as uh, or no, it wasn't the same type, 13. but it was it was in the same. It was like, similar category. Yeah, it was. They were both Pacifics, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. But after many, many years, uh, this uh, this locomotive was found uh, 235 feet beneath the surface in a jumble of boulders. Uh, Whoops. Yeah. Did they have... When was it discovered? A um, couple days okay. ago. Oh, huh. really? Yeah. Recent. Very, very wow, recently. Wow, we actually managed to keep on top of news for once. Well, I mean, if... If, um, I mean, this is totally recorded on time. This happened today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. On time terminus every week. <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah. it's like what we, it's like, it's the rule of every railroad. It's a rule of thumb. If you're on the train, the reason trains don't have clocks on them is because you always have to ask the conductor what time it is and if you're on time. And the conductor will always say, yes, you're on time. Um, <laughs> well... The conductor's watch is always right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I got a pocket watch. Oh, did I now you? have a working pocket watch, except it's... Excellent. It, it ticks, but I can't set the time for the life of me. Doesn't talk? Oh, do no. you just not know how to adjust no, no, it? No, you pop the thing out to adjust it, but the second hand does not stop, and you cannot adjust it. It's like it okay. never comes loose all the way. So I'm probably going to take it to somebody to look at it. Is it's it... a very old, it's a rare watch. 
Um, nice. It's an egg is it one that you pop out or you push in? Pop out. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, I got it as part of my steampunk costume because I was up at the Cog Railway. But that's a nice story I can tell in a little while, depending on how quickly we're getting through this stuff. So, uh, somebody take off from my sunken locomotive and make good of what time we have. Right. Well, the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society sort of retrieved a locomotive from the dead. They, what? Yeah. This weekend they painted, or they revealed their... Oh! Uh, yeah. They did a big... You know, they did a. They had a big press conference at at their shops, and they repainted and renumbered uh, 765 into nickel plate 7, 767, which is what 765 originally came from. 767. Whoa. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then they crashed it. Yes. <laughs> they they did. They managed to. What did they do? Like. Yeah, they derailed like the back. Uh, the last three drivers, I think, on some bad on some bad track. So yeah, have fun, guys. Yeah, they, they they completely <laughs> bent Get the, the oak rail. wedges. Yeah, right. They completely the big bent the rail. hammers. Bf bfh. Yeah, they mean the big fish. Yep. Big fucking hammers. Did you did you see in the script for episode fourteen? I I had Johnson Spoilers. ask Johnson ask Mike if he had a BFW. Yes, I did. I was very <laughs> pleased with it. All right. Anyways, I was like, "Yes, you're learning." Hmm. Wait, what? What's a BFW? A big effing wrench. Okay. <laughs> My favorite tool in the shop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to add stuff to this. So, um, N K or. It did not work nearly as well as I hoped it would. What'd you do? <laughs> it just blew a big hole in the ground. Damn. Wait a minute. Excuse Wait. me? You're playing Wait. games during the podcast? Of course not. Carry You're on. Give him a point. I did. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, though, I may have just world edited in a lot of TNT. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> just for the hell of it, or what? I'm, I'm gonna try and build a subway station. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't make it look like... Oh my god. Okay, so another little anecdote from New York City. So, Luba is from Ukraine. She is the first time being in the United States. You know, she'll probably come back at some point, because I think she enjoyed her, her time here. But I was glad that we took Metro North and instead of Amtrak, because you go into Grand Central instead of Penn. Uh, by yeah. the way... Uh, Madison got mildly upset with me when I called Madison Square Garden an abomination, um, but then I but then I showed her what Penn Station used to like, and she was completely on my side. Um, yeah, <laughs> or used to look like I mean. And then she got really excited when I told her that there's a maximum of ten years on the property by 2023. Madison Square Garden's going to be gone. Uh, Is it? Yep. The, Interesting. The board, the the town council voted 36 and 0 as or you know. As in, you know, completely for, unanimously for, not extending Madison Square Garden's lease of the air rights above Penn Station. Really? Uh, yeah. What are they? What are they, they going to do then? Are they going to rebuild Penn Station? Yeah, there there have been a few architectural firms submitting things. Really? Sub submitting uh, ideas for what a. Are they going to try and make it historic, or are they no. pulling a Denver Union now? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna probably pull Denver Union Station. They want to make a nice big you know new centerpiece of the city. It's I, I it's what is it? It's the most it's the busiest railroad station in the United States. I don't doubt that. I would yeah, think. you know uh, it's either that or Grand Central, and it's yeah. busier than Grand Central. So mm -hmm. it's a it's definitely then the busiest intercity railroad station in the United States because Grand Central doesn't count as an intercity terminal because they just run commuter rail. Uh, they riding commuter rail. Yeah. I oh, I want to send them an email to ask if they have those files. Uh, I want to send uh, basically the MBTA an email saying like, "Hey, can, is there any chance you guys have the old announcer files? <laughs> <laughs> is there any chance you have the old announcer <laughs> files? Yeah. Yes, I mean they probably do. I would I would be Somebody's so souped. To. I would be They're, so souped. Look. Troll around on YouTube or something. I, troll around I on the looked, internet. There's I looked. Gotta I be. <laughs> yeah. 
This is now my mission. I choose to accept it. Good luck and Godspeed. Anyways, oh. so I was like, okay, Luba is going to see the best, uh, you know, inner city rail in this country has to offer. You know, it's not inner city rail, but the best, you know, one of the nicest looking stations in the United States, Grand Central Station. Uh, the best looking station in New York City. Duh. Um, that's not really a high bar, but... And then I went, oh, okay, where's our hotel? Oh, it's in Chinatown. Okay, so how are we going to get there? Oh, we've got to take the JZ through... The what? And, yeah, the JZ trains. They're the brown line. They run through some of the most wonderfully maintained stations in New York City. And by wonderfully maintained, uh, I mean the dingiest, dirtiest, like, most wrecked, least funded. It's awful. Uh, Not sure please, if slightly racist Jay Z station. Uh, the the Jay Z existed long before Jay Z did. Okay. Uh, I I the, least I least the I brown think so. line. I was like the Jay Z train. Oh, that's kind of a funny coincidence. The brown line. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but that's kind of they um... coincidence. I think not. <laughs> it, it's it's an it's it is an urban legend. There isn't really any truth to it. But it is an urban legend that Jay Z derived his name from the Jay Z train. Uh, he's he's going on record stating that no, that's not the reason. But uh, anyway, when can you trust celebrities? Chambers Street being the worst station, and the one that we actually had to go to, Bowery, being a close second. Uh, close second. Uh, both originally four track stations now operating only two of their tracks. Uh, Bowery has been cut in half, like you can't see the other platform. Chambers, not so much. Uh, Chambers Street is really in a bad way, and in fact, we're sitting in Chambers Street waiting for the train to come in, and Luba points and, like, oh, there's a giant rat on one of the other platforms. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's just like, oh, no. There's a big rat! And I'm like, oh wow. And he just sort of scurried off. Next time when you go, you should go to Times Square Station and the Natural History Museum. Oh, yeah. Those are the best stations. I I would like to have gotten. Not the last. Not this time I was there, but the time before that, I I rode a train out of uh, the Natural History History Museum. Blah. I love the mosaic work. It's so majestic through there. Brooklyn Bridge is like that as well. Brooklyn Bridge is some nice stuff. And of Brooklyn course, I got to see Bridge City Hall. Just falling awesome. down, falling down, um, falling down. What was down. the other? What was the other thing there? Something to comment about. But anyways, yeah. So that was that was terribly. And then and then of course in in full New York City style with the the Jay Z getting the short end of the stick. Ow, that's loud. Uh, um, the Jay-Z getting the short end of the stick. The train that rolled in... Like, the first Jay-Z train we rode was alright, and so was, I think, the second one. But the third one, when we had to ride it the third time, it was this, like, horribly graffitied set of cars in, and I'm like, oh, man. Like, this this is just sad. Where the hood, where the hood, where the yeah, hood right? at? You have a cat with a what with a what? They call it the hood because they can't spell neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. What? I mean, admittedly, neighbor's a hard word. It is kind of, actually. <laughs> yeah. As far as words are concerned, what was the word that was really difficult today? Oh, uh, we had a kid was asking a question about the pronunciation of pariah. And I told pariah? him the correct pronunciation. He's like, oh, what does that mean? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> Tobias, I'm a rapper. <laughs> Don't, no, no. <laughs> I'm surprised you of all people knows that reference. You were the one who showed it to me. Oh, that's right, I was. <laughs> I didn't watch it though. Yeah, that's that's right. I now remember the context of the yes. discussion that led up to that. Anyways, so would you like some? Would you like some word-based irony? Yes. So, a derailed train car hit a bar. In Iowa. Oh, the I heard bar, about this. The bar was called Derailed. <laughs> <laughs> bang, 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 bang. So, there's really no other news aside from that regarding this. It's just, 
Yeah. A freight train derailed in northern Iowa and rolled into a, into a bar. So a freight train rolls into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> There's gotta be a joke about that somewhere. I mean, I have no doubt. Uh, anyways. Here's a... So when Amtrak rolls into a bar... So Amtrak rolls into a bar, kills three civilians. Wow. Sorry, no, that's CSX. Sorry. Amtrak is good. They got a new CEO. Did they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wick, Mor- Wick Mormon is the uh, Amtrak CEO now. <laughs> the foamer who loves steam and heritage. Yeah. Does he? Wait, got- does he really? Yeah, please, the guy please who tell made me you're the, not uh, being. NS please tell me you're not being sarcastic because I want Amtrak to run fifty five fifty at some point. Yes, yeah, so fifty six twenty nine. Wick Mormon was the ex CEO for Norfolk okay. Southern, and he's awesome. the one who started the twenty first century steam program and their heritage unit program. Why will stop laughing about Mormon? <laughs> no, fun fact: I am Mormon. You can't make me. Really? Yes. Oh. Dun dun dun. He gets two points for being. <laughs> That's racist. Whoa. That is racist. Yeah, that's, that's more like racist. That's the textbook definition. Ethnist? 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 Well, no, it's not racist by definition because Mormon isn't a race. Oh, well, I mean, it's a religion. It's religionist. It would. <laughs> I mean, it would be racist, but Mormon isn't a religion or a race. It is a religion. Scientology is not a religion. Oh, let all the jokes prepares, begin. Prepares for a red dot to appear on my forehead. <laughs> I do not live in Utah. Spoiler alert. Somehow. Order. How did you escape? How did you escape? <laughs> I got in my car and drove. <laughs> Across the surface of the moon. I've actually been to Utah. It's quite nice. But it is very moon. Mm. Much it is wow. incredibly moon. I was, a, I was on the surface of the moon yesterday. Where were you? You wish you were. Well, no. Uh, as far as the... <laughs> New Hampshire state legislature is concerned, I guess. <laughs> oh, uh, ha, 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 I see what you did there. Yeah. Thanks, so, government. So Sylvester uh, Sylvester Marsh, the creator of the Mount Washington Cog Railway, when asked for a charter to build his railway to the top of Mount Washington, uh, was laughed at by the state legislature of New Hampshire. And they essentially said... We might as well grant you a charter to build to the moon. Because it would be as just as likely. Mm-hmm. They actually granted they granted his charter on the basis that there would be no negative effects from him running the railroad because there would be no railroad. <laughs> you know. The thing is that that could work but the moon spins. Like, <laughs> spin. well, I mean, and it do you goes, even spin? It goes, it goes around the Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have to build like some futuristic bendy track. I don't know. The centri- something, something centripetal force. Or you know, cable, you could just elevator you know, thing. Go on a spaceship. Physics. That works too. <laughs> or just get the great glass elevator. That would solve <laughs> all the problems. Oh. Anyways, I was up uh, in New Hampshire for a steampunk convention, and I wish I had some pictures to share with you guys right now. Uh, I can't exactly wrangle them up because they're on Facebook, and Mom hasn't sent me the copies of them yet. Mom, get the camera. <laughs> but I had a, a apparatus, basically a, a backpack, which was a firebox and boiler, uh, an arm with pistons on it, a leg with pistons on it, so I, as if I had, you know, powered braces of sorts, uh, as well as a Victorian outfit that I wore, including that pocket watch. It was part of my Christmas, or birthday gift, not Christmas gift, jeez. Uh, and, uh, I was up there for the Steampunk Festival the first day. They ran a, they ran a steam excursion at three o'clock in the afternoon, which is something they don't normally do. I could go on and on about stuff that happened at the COG because I talked some of those employees to death. Um, huh. But it's like me at Disney. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> and they ran their, they ran a steam trip at three o'clock in the afternoon. I got to watch it depart. They were running Wombec. Uh, what a wonderful Ooh. little engine number nine Wombec is. 
And we got to watch that engine depart, and then I talked them to death, and then Wombat came back, and everything sort of shut down. Uh, wow, Beck. Yeah, and then the following morning, I got up with my mom pretty early to get over to the Cog Railway and ride the first train of the day, which is always steep, also Wombat. And I will note, uh, Mount Washington is famous, or infamous, more like, uh, infamously known for having, quote, the worst weather in the world. As someone who's been on the summit of Mount Washington twice, I can't say I don't believe them. Uh, now, I've seen the videos, I've seen the, the wind speed record that they held for a very long time of 231 miles per hour. Uh, and when I was up there, it was maybe 75 degrees down at the base station, and it was approximately 45 degrees on the summit, with 40 mile an hour winds and gusts up to about 55. Oh, God. Uh, oh. And also visibility of about 15 to 20 feet maximum because you were in the clouds all the time. I almost got blown over a couple of times. Gust like, 55? Uh, Rule 55. Yeah. You can't do it. Uh, if we had that weather, I'm pretty sure I'd just die because <laughs> it's always hot here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. It was 100 and humid today. Oh, God. See, it's Does not it come the... from the Lent Manana? I mean, it's the friggin' humidity that, that gets you. Is it yeah. humid down there? And then I had to go do marching band. Yeah, we've been getting yeah. a lot of rain lately. Oh. Well. It... Wish I could run away to Colorado. That's not that far. Come to Colorado, or go to Colorado. Come for the steam trains, stay for the weed. <laughs> wow. Go go to Colorado, and then from Colorado, and then to Colorado again, and then from Colorado again, and then to Colorado again, and then from Colorado again. Basically, ride the cats. I go, yeah. I go to Colorado a lot, actually. Because my grandparents live there. So I get to see the Durango and Silverton a lot. Yay! And the Mac and Cheese River. The cat Whoa. sucks. Can I just talk about that? Whoa! Wow. Hey. Whoa. I mean, they're, they're broke, direct, but... Durango really Silverton, broke. best railroad in America. Uh, Wait, uh, yeah. Weibold, I don't know if you know this off the top of your head. How how much does the DNS climb? Like, what's the difference between uh, Durango? Isn't it like 3,000? Maybe? Okay. I think, it's, I think it's 3,000. I was I was more curious if, if, you know, basically which climbed more... The DNS of well, the Mount Washington Cog. Well, Katz has a steeper grade. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mount, Mount Washington trumps uh, all. <laughs> yeah, they like go straight Almost. up. Yeah, about three thousand. A little less, okay. about twenty-eight hundred. Okay. What's Silverton? What's the elevation of Silverton then? Nine thousand some odd. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then Durango six thousand. Okay, so something. Durango, Durango, you actually start above the elevation of Mount Washington Summit in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> welcome welcome to my state. What is what is the elevation at the peak of Mount uh, Washington? I think sixty two eighty eight. Sixty two eighty eight, okay. That's that's yeah. why I said I was higher than you. Slightly, yeah. Yeah, slightly. Marginally. Weibold lives in the wrong part of Colorado. Don't. What do you mean the wrong part of Colorado? There is no wrong part. It's all great. It's all just traffic where Weibold lives on I twenty five. That's all it is. Okay. Okay, I will. I will agree. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you drive through there at one in the morning, or you don't drive through Denver. You d you just don't. Yeah. Jeez. Anyways, I want to just go real quick to some Steam Town news, starting with actually something straight off of thirty seven thirteen. Now, there's not any new. Um... Oh, actually, there is some new. Uh... There is a new thing. August 15th, a significant milestone in the restoration of B&M 3713 was reached this week at the Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton, Pennsylvania, as work was completed on the side boiler patch. Uh, so, guess what? They're fixing stuff. Uh, it's, it's actually nice to see some forward progress out of these guys, considering the, the mishaps that have happened uh, lately. But, mishaps? Yeah, they they had a problem with the the I wasn't the crown sheet. It was the it was the rear sheet. 
that was the the tube sheet or yeah, something. Yeah, it was it was the tube sheet. They had the Ooh. tube hole spaced too close together. Uh, oh, so yeah, they, that'll that'll they, yeah Ooh. yeah. They had to redo the tube sheet, or they're working on that. But they just that'll finished sink, up this, yeah. this patch to the side of the boiler, which is really ghetto looking, but it works. Most most engines actually have. Well, I don't know about most. A lot of engines do have boiler patches, though. Yeah, I I remember actually looking at the segment because we got to look at. There are all the little ultrasound readings scrawled on the side of the boiler when TJ and I were at Steamtown, and one of them was, you know, I was like, man, that's kind of thin. And this is that spot. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. They were like 0.7 or 0.6 or something. At least they're getting that's work, work done on it. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But I'm just glad to see some forward progress. And then Alice can go foam the Super Pacific when it's done. See, we, we hold off calling it the Super Pacific because, frankly, it's not that super. It's just really big. <laughs> super. <laughs> it's the Mega Pacific. The Mega Pacific. And also, uh, speaking of the Mega Pacific, we've got a 3713 benefit raffle drawing on September 4th. Um, so, a massive model train wrap on the Benefit 3713 is ending September 4th. The grand prize is a brass O-scale model of 3713 made by Weaver. Uh, since Weaver has closed its doors, this may be your only chance to own one of these exquisite models of the Constitution. Ten other prize packages are offered in both O and HO scales. So, the drawing will be held at the Moscow, Pennsylvania station on September 4th. Why will don't sing? Uh, I'm trying really hard <laughs> not to. Uh, I sing. No. You sing, you get point. It glass around this one. Give him a point. 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 Oh, point. Oh, 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 point. Right. Hey. He has three. Uh, Wait, where did I get the second? Uh, uh, racist. You did come. Er, hey. They're not racist, uh, really. Well, just, I'm not racist. What? Wait, why did he get a point for that? He was pointing it out. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm just glad I have no points. Okay, right then now. two. I gave. I made sure he has two. Okay. Anyways, uh, the other thing I have, uh, just a couple little things. So a while back, this is just a funny little story. I got sent a picture uh, from my roommate Frank, or my ex-roommate, I guess, because he's going abroad this coming semester, uh, and I have a new new guy coming in. So. Uh -oh. My roommate sent me a picture of railroad tracks, and he goes, look at these tiny tracks, and I immediately recognized them. They were okay. the, the tracks of the main narrow gauge on uh, in Portland, Maine, and I go, oh, hey, that's blah, 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 you know, I, I wrote that out to him, and I was like, oh, cool, I have fun in Maine, and he's like, how the hell did you know that? I'm amazed that you figured that out, and I go, oh, yeah, no, here's the train, and I sent him a video of uh, you know, main narrow gauge number four running. Or number three, I think. Uh, and so, a couple days later, he sends me back another picture of the train running. Because he happened to be down there when they were running, uh, they were running the diesel. But I was just like, oh wow, awesome. You know, you managed to catch it. I was wow. Just, he was just impressed by, you know, he sent me that and immediately I'm like, oh, I know this. <laughs> the farmer's intellect. Yeah. Well, because because it's very peculiar. It's not, it's not like it's just a random stretch of tracks. They're the only place I've seen. You know, again, it's kind of peculiar. It was originally standard gauge, and then the bridge burned, so they abandoned that section of standard gauge. I think it was CP or CN. Uh, and the main narrow gauge came in, and all they did was take one rail and move it closer to the other one. So <laughs> yeah. the, the two foot is not centered at all on the ties. It's cocked off to one side. It's the only place I'd seen it. And I was like, oh, hey, you know, I recognize that. I was there. Excellent. Yeah, and they're actually, they announced their winter photographic weekend, which is going to happen in January of 2017, uh, for more than just the main narrow gauge. So equipment from all five main narrow gauge railways will be in operation, including Sandy River and Rangeley Lakes number 6, Kennebec Central, number four, Wicasset, Waterville, and Farmington, number nine, Monson, number three, and Bridgeton and Saco River, coach number 11. Because I guess there isn't anything left from the Saco River? Maybe? 
I have no idea. Uh, I guess. Never each heard weekend, of it before. Each weekend, I have. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what's left of it. I was up by the Saco River actually, uh, while I was in New Hampshire. Anyways, uh, each weekend session will include a series of prepared scenes. Uh, and tickets for the event cost $400 for the full weekend. Wow. Uh, oh, okay. That's expensive. It's, yeah, it's, be it's because because they're setting up the session with those tickets. Uh, the sessions yeah. are limited to 50 people with a minimum of 40 people. So, you need... Uh, it, it's basically like they're just running these for the photographers and the people that really want to see the steam run. So... Wow. Wow. Yeah. Pay some and money then, and you get steam. And there's going to be a night photo session as well. So that's January 14th, January 21st. Uh, the, the deadline for tickets is December 15th. So, wow. It's taking place at the... W, I, it's taking place at the WWNF. So not so, in Portland. Mm. What? So speaking of winter tickets... Uh-oh. Colorado Already? Railroad Museum, yes. Polar <laughs> Express. Museum members, oh. buy your Polar Express tickets. Also, dumpster days. We don't know when he will grace us with his ceruleanness, but he will be <laughs> appearing one of these days. He's really lucrative dumpster. Oh, know. we were trying to figure out stuff to do in New Hampshire, and I saw... Oh, here's a brochure for the Conway City <laughs> Railroad. And Thomas and Percy are on the cover. And I go, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not them too. <laughs> You'd be surprised the number of people your age we get it day out with. I mean, I would probably still go, cause just to see like the stupid talking face. You know, it's it is like, kind of it's it is kind of cool. Yeah, it is really creepy, but it's kind of cool. Wait, it's like, so I don't know, they've got a freaking wait. animatronic Thomas face. <laughs> yeah, like it talks, it moves its mouth. Mm -hmm. Wait, so can I you like? Wait, quick question. Is there like a... Like, can you like talk to the face and will it say something back or is there a guy controlling it? Or does um, it just do it on its own? No, there's a guy controlling it. It's... Oh. Um, oh. It basically has a number of pre-recorded like his voice actor actually... Did stuff. His, <laughs> yeah, they actually do lines that's... You know, the fairest... <laughs> The favorite one that if you start saying it at the museum, everybody will just join in and say the rest of it, and then we'll all be mad at each other. It's, um, all aboard. My friends and I are going Damn on a Craig. special ride together. See you soon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, one time that, gets, I went to that Thomas... gets annoying at eight times a day, let me tell you. <laughs> one time I went to Thomas, and the very best thing is the guy... When I went, there was a guy who played the guitar, and he'd sing all the Thomas songs. <laughs> and that's, like, the best part. We just blast them on the PA, and they're kind of <laughs> annoying too. Yeah, Although it was like all the nostalgia. I would, I would. My favorite song oh, always oh, you was. Played all the, you played all the good songs. Yeah, Al. Well, Al's too out of touch to update the playlist, so it's still the playlist from when we started the event ten years ago. Good. <laughs> so it's it's literally all the music that I grew up with with Thomas. It's like, the best I remember song, this. The best song was always "Accidents Happen." Yep. Yep. Accidents happen again and again. See, I'm tempted to, I'm tempted to go to my railroad club and film as many derailments as I can and compile that into a video set to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just get pictures of like stuff that we've reported on the terminus. <laughs> yeah, you know. So what else have you guys got? Got um. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know he better cover twenty nine twenty six, or someone's gonna have a heart attack. But you know what? I will. The I Ohio know. Railway Museum lives again. Hmm? They they finally completed the uh, the uh, the track work. They're, they had, I think. Oh, what did Jake say? They had like I think a hundred feet or so of track that they needed to replace. Hey. They finally got around to it. Yeah, they finally got it done, so they're so they're open, open on Sundays. Go check them out. Say hi to Jake for me. <laughs> By the way, just an aside about the Conway Scenic, their uh, their 060 is out of commission right now because inspections uh -huh. and stuff. 
next year uh. she's going to be back. But something mm. I didn't know was they used that 060 on the Notch train, which is the train that goes over Crawford Notch all the way to Fabian's. I was figuring, wow, you know, this is not, um, this is not, uh, you know, originally I didn't, I didn't know that, and I figured, oh, they're going to have the 060 for the valley trains, and they're going to pull the notch trains with the jeeps like they do. And then I saw a picture of the 060 at Fabian's, and I went, whoa, really? Huh, very cool. Yeah. Y'all are lucky, because I don't have any railroad museums within three and a half hours from me. Well, that sucks. You've got the cats. And Durango and Silverton, they're the same distance away. DNS counts as a museum. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you're saying it's I've more got, than three and a half hours. All I've got... Well, it depends on how fast my mom drives, but that's not the point. <laughs> okay, so is it three um, and a half hours how a uh, normal person drives, or three and a half hours how I drive? Three and a half hours <laughs> probably, like, For how, you how drive, a normal person minutes. would drive. <laughs> it's 212 miles, however, you want to figure that out. Uh... Eh, maybe. No, it's stuck in my head. <laughs> but I've got Amtrak, hashtag the Southwest Chief. It wasn't late today. I was surprised. Well, that but is actually what? surprising. <laughs> Especially on the Chief. The Chief I, I is think, the best route. I, I think the Lake Chief's Shore like Limited, always late, though. I, yeah, but I think yeah. the Lake Shore Limited has, has firmly taken its place as the least reliable service on Amtrak. Okay, for And that's point. not really an exaggeration. I looked it up, and I was like, oh, let's see. And I'm looking around, and I looked at the Empire Builder first, because the Empire Builder, last time I checked, had like a 20% on-time rate. And it was like 60 or 70, and I was like, oh, pretty damn better. good. Like, stuff got better. And then I looked at the the Lakeshore Limited, it's like 40%. And I'm like, ah. I've got Amtrak and my commuter railroad, and then if I go south, I'll get BNSF. Hmm. I have PNW. It could be worse. Or I should say, G-N-E. I had PNW. <laughs> Just no, this past bum, week, bum, 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 Janice bum, in bum. Wyoming has acquired the Providence and Worcester Railroad for a hundred and twenty-six million dollars. Uh, oh. Jeez. How does that compare to your PNW, huh, Milky? Uh, oh, well, we got ours from time to time. So. Mm-hmm. Does so G- it was just does... so it cost the same. It was just dirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, does does GNW own your PNW? Yeah. Okay, well, do. no. I'm wondering how much they bought it for. Uh, um. They got the Ohio. Oh, let me look this up. I uh, think they used most of the system from Union Pacific, and uh, uh, the line that they do own, I think, was. A few million, I think. Jeez. Uh, I don't know if that number is off the top of my head, but... I have no short lines either, so... I mean, it's because, and this is what the guys at the Providence Northern were talking about, the G&W wants to own the Boston and Albany line, which is currently owned by CSX. And, at least as far as I understand... Uh, G&W doesn't buy from Class 1s particularly often, or really at all. They just sort of snatch up Class 2s. Oh, so, their G&W basically is going around and purchasing all of the Class 2s around the BNA line, and I guess they're just going to try and muscle CSX out or something? Just kind of monopoly CSX away? That's what Illegal I was thinking, monopoly. too, and I was... I was looking over what's happening, and I'm looking over the maps and stuff, and I had this revelation last night when I was talking to the group, and I went, holy crap, they're gonna New Haven us. Again. (laughs) Again. (laughs) Under a sea of orange. (laughs) It's the same freaking colors, too. (laughs) Yeah, they already have orange on the Providence and Worcester. No, it's like They have have a much better paint scheme than the GNW does. The candy bars... G&W. Oh yeah, just Loha candy bar. The candy bars. <laughs> really though, I mi- I miss I've my. Heard that I've, before, but it's incredibly accurate. I miss my creamsicle uh, RS threes. Uh, but oops. I miss, I miss my Ohio Central uh, gray, burgundy, and yellow. 
I miss my um I miss my black and orange. You miss your cow pan and engines, Milky. Mo the locomotive. Well but I mean Flyball no, Wheel and Lake Erie has their paint scheme is pretty much Rio Grand Part too. Their paint scheme is a rip off. They have <laughs> I think two or rip. three no, off. they have like two or three uh, tunnel motors that's that are still painted yeah. Rio Grande. Off. Let me they find look the beautiful. They they are in fact beautiful. Rip off. I mean, it is a rip off, but they're preserving your amazing paint scheme. Uh, I mean, they changed the number, but uh, heritage. Oh, where's where's the diesel? Heritage one? equipment. Uh. That's a oh, yeah. model. Fun fact, I've actually seen the E-Unit in that video. Uh, apparently it looks like it's going to be a good deal, though. Uh, the deal is expected to add $35 million of revenue in the first year and realize $8 million of immediate overhead and operational cost savings. Uh, Jeez. Yeah. That'll, that'll do it. Yeah, no, that's it's a, it's a good thing overall. I just don't want to see the... Because GMW doesn't really like... Uh, you know, the engines of age that they have. You know, they, it doesn't like the B-32s and stuff like... Or B-23s and stuff like that. Well, uh, yeah, and, um, they, they don't like old things. Yeah, and which is a shame, and, um, because that is the Providence of Worcester's bread and butter, and they look really nice. And also, they're going to turn it into the Sea of Orange instead of keeping their really nice paint scheme that they currently have. Fortunately... Providence of Worcester does have a very nice paint scheme. Fortunately, what I learned is the P&W really goes overboard with their paint. So it'll be a while before the GNW really has a good reason to replace those engines or to repaint them. Uh, like I mean, the, like we'll probably just patch them. Like paint schemes to last yeah, forty years on those engines. Jeez, you know, uh, and they they still look snazzy. And some of them, you know, a couple of them are just repainted. The biggest engines are just repainted from Florida. Oh yeah, didn't coast. they? Oh, uh, oh, oh yeah, they got like. What did they get? Like two SD seventies? Yeah, they got a pair of SD seventies like from the Florida East Coast. And they also have fifty. Or one fifty, I mean. What's one fifty? Hold on. What? Your mic died. Is this the yes, this is the Yes, thing. it's the one you're thinking about. It's the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> it's a one hundred it's a uh what is it? It's a hundred and fifty tonner, I think. That's what Or no, it's a, sorry, it's a twenty five tonner. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking this up. Yeah, yeah I, I posted the link. W150. It is adorable. Oh my god! <laughs> Prepare for squee. It's in. It's in Worcester. I want to visit it. Ah. Also, they had gerps. Gerps. The, oh, yeah. the Jeep looks Gerp. really Gerp. weird in the paint scheme. I'm gonna be honest. I don't like it. Oh yeah, I looked up their roster. I was kind of surprised they have all you know all boats. They yeah, have they like have no Jeep. All, all they boats. Have like maybe four or five jeeps. I'm, kind, I'm really surprised. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, I don't that's think why the jeeps so, look bad in the paint scheme. I, I the high hoods, I think it looked kind of like strange. Okay, the high hoods, yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 right. hey, hey. Well, no, no, no not because they're high hoods, Jader. Just because they look weird in the paint scheme. Chill. Oh. It doesn't look it's as good without the little dip on the nose. Yeah, exactly. S Speaking of things that don't even uh, paint, Strasburg Railroad now has the. Um, Has the what? Go on. Say what you need to see. <laughs> and on that bombshell, speaking of things that are number 115, come from Rhode Island. We have this lovely no! abomination again. <laughs> <laughs> we, have this, we have this abomination once more. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Ask Ellis. I don't want to know. Ellis, Ellis, what is this? I don't know. I want to build it in Gary's mind now. Have fun. <laughs> this. <sighs> Anyways, the oh, Steamtown oops. National Historic <laughs> Site invites everyone to hashtag find your park during the centennial birthday month. I don't know why I read that sentence with a hashtag in it. By the way, uh, just as a, just an aside, you know the little tourism maps that they give out in places that are, have like all the little attractions on them and stuff like that? Hello. Everything Hi. was broken. I'm sure anyone who's ever been to any place knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. I, bring, yeah. I, have I blame Cent CenturyLink. It's all CenturyLink's fault. Yeah, good good for them. Not Comcastic. But yeah, so they uh, recently updated their style of map. 
sort of, in the sense that they added a new marker to their maps. I noticed there are little S's all over the place. I checked the guide. Are the key? What are they? Selfie spots. God. I go, I'm not sure I can ever pick up one of these maps again. Good point. <laughs> you know, when Teddy Roosevelt started the National Park Service. <laughs> <laughs> this was not it's what he had It's moments like mind. this where you think he's not rolling over in his grave. He's probably doing backflips in his grave. <laughs> no, he's, he's holding out his arm to take a selfie. He, he, oh, gosh. No, he has a stick for that, shit. you know? Yeah. <laughs> he's, it's his bone. <laughs> Not like that, Jader. Calm down. Right. Yeah. Anyways, oh, so... Hey, what's up? Free admission to all 412 national parks from August 25th to August 28th. And he's gone again. August is the nationwide celebration of national parks of so this month that we're in right now. Mm. And there will be a... Um, Uh, there will be a special thing going on over at Steamtown. In fact, it ties in very neatly with where I just was, because I got to meet Pepper Sass, the first hey. uh, cog locomotive ever built, as a matter of fact, in 1866, which provided service up Mount Washington for many, many years. Uh, she has currently been restored to look nice, been put on a trailer and is going to be taken to Scranton to be put on display. Because while the national Yay. parks, while the national parks are a hundred years old, Pepper Sass is one hundred and fifty. So. Yay. Mhm. Mm Yay. Really though. No. Go check out Anne number twenty six and Pepper Sass. And get free admission. Ever. Uh, wish we. The national parks need to not do the free admission. <laughs> yeah. It's, Again, I, mean, it's I don't a, have any national parks, so. Do you really you not? have some. Yeah, but they they're all like a million miles away in the in the real desert. Yeah, because well, they're all rocks. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to fill in. Fill in the dead air, people. <laughs> um, I'll uh, wait. like talk about uh, stuff. I, Go on. Um, news. Um, um Bible stop. Mil Milky could bring up twenty nine twenty six. Yeah. Stop filming, and I will. <laughs> now would be a good time to foam. Now um, they are currently doing. Superheating testing. Ooh. And. Superheaters. And they're doing. Superheaters. Work on the steam. And kind of think of what they were exactly doing. 2926 uh, will probably be my first cab ride. Oh my god. Yep. Yeah, oh wait, do you like volunteer with them? No, it's all about who you know. You gotta be in the know to know, you know. Yes. No. You know. I know. No. <laughs> you know. I don't. I don't know. I, I know. Well, I'm in the know, so. I can't believe I had to say that. <laughs> oh, I, got <laughs> I can't believe you did it. <laughs> what was I gonna do? Then when I'm 18, I'm gonna get Weibull to get me a cab ride. Uh, you only have to be 16 to get one at the museum. Oh. Really? Yeah, but he Museum's said he's better. gonna wait an extra two years to make you. I'm going out to the freaking museum then. You have to be. Oh, it's at the engineer and fireman's discretion. You have to be 16 years of age, wear closed-toed shoes, and have jeans on. Ah, oh, that's a problem because I like to rock the flip-flops every day. <laughs> yeah, I can't can't have those on the steam shoes. Yeah, and enjoy enjoy when you're you know when cinders fall on your feet, or you know. Fun fact: most people have a sock tan. I have a flip-flop tan. Well, but right now I have a sock tan because of marching band, and it sucks. I have a really bad farmer's tan because I'm country. Same. I, got a I, have, really a watch, bad one I, have, I have a watch tan, and it's annoying. 
<laughs> my my English teacher has a sunglasses tan, and it's kind of funny. <laughs> I had the worst sunglass tan during band camp. One time at band camp. <laughs> nope, I don't even want to start that. I'm not going to start that. Let's just say the goddamn war story weeks. Uh, there I love was. band camp. <laughs> <laughs> Blah blah Davenport. Blah blah Pearl Harbor. All right. Anyways. Anyways, um, FA twenty nine twenty six. Having its um second steam dynamo put back on it. Ooh. Uh, stuff. Ooh, dynamos. Yeah. They're getting closer and closer to being to being an complete. engine again. Estimated yeah. completion is summer 2017. May, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Soon, TM. It's kind of the same thing with the Klaus Mafia project. They're also getting a whole bunch of work done on their um, engine. Nice. I- I'm happy to hear about the Klaus Mafia. It's like the only diesel I care about. Because it's not a re- it's not a normal diesel. Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. Which, for the record, I noticed that the Cog Railway diesels are basically cross fires. They're diesel hydraulics. Yeah. Also, also, I learned that they have six hundred horsepower John Deere engines in them. <laughs> oh, John Deere! And the Nothing reason runs like a deer. And the reason this came up in conversation was people were asking, uh, or rather the brakeman slash conductor was talking about the brake wheels. There are two massive brake wheels at the back of the coach on the Mount Washington Cog Railway. And the reason she has to actuate these the whole time, and she really she really works at it, um, is because Ooh. the engine, when rolling down the hill at a leisurely four miles an hour-ish, uh, does not... Uh, or rather cannot support the weight of itself and the coach uh, completely and still maintain that speed. So the brakeman on the coach has to make sure that the coach is not pressing up against the engine quite so much. Same with Manitoba Pikes Peak. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they do Which, steam now. Yeah? Yeah. Not. They don't do it all the way to the top because they're escared. Yeah, I could understand. That's a long way yeah. to the top, Manitou and Pikes it is a It is a long way to the top, but come on, she was built for it. <laughs> she can do it. Does it they're does that they're engine, worried about... Does that engine very, carry enough to make it up in one trip? The last yeah. time in, they in ran one, that engine, it broke down. Well, the reason it broke down is because there's a portion of the grade that is steep enough that the engine is no longer coal fire. They converted it to oil fire. Oh, okay. Um... There's a portion of the grade that's steep enough that the engine will stop feeding oil and the fire will go out. <laughs> but since it's an oil-fired engine, we're discussing it's like, you're going to start dropping pressure quick, but if it's a short enough section of grade, couldn't you just like get right on the pops, hit that section, watch the fire go out, and basically just burn all the residual steam you have and then light the fire again as soon as you get off of that? Because it's an oil fire. Hmm. Yeah. You know, if you... I don't know if that engine has dampers or not, because you wouldn't want to be drafting the cold air, but... Yeah. There's... They're, I feel like they're more scared of damaging the engine than they should be, which that's I, I mean, a very legitimate I, concern. I, but. I mean... I mean... To talk about another uh, Mount Washington... Or, or rather, another mountain climbing cog railway engine that was brought back into service after many years in retirement... Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'd I'd really like to see it run up to the top again. I feel oh, like yeah. it could. For for those who don't know what I was referencing, in 1929, on the 60th anniversary of the Mount Washington Cog Railway being completed, the Boston and Main Railroad decided to restore and run Pepper Sass, the original engine. Uh, and Pepper Sass made it partway up the mountain, and then the front axle broke, and... Uh, for lack of a better term, she began descending the mountain at a high rate of speed. Uh, Fell off the track, 
Uh, everyone except one person jumped to safety, and the person that remained on the locomotive was the only fatality. Uh, but the boiler did not rupture, and they were managed to they managed to get all the pieces back together in the end. Uh. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she's probably never going to run again. However, people at the Cog have expressed interest in using those 1929 blueprints from the Boston and Maine, which they still have stored in the station house uh, and slash museum to get a replica pepper sass to run up the mountain. Excellent. At a whopping 1.8 miles an hour with featuring a stop for water <laughs> yeah, featuring a stop for water as the steam engines have to do and a stop for wood because pepper sass doesn't carry enough wood. Oh. Because the the halfway house used to be a woodshed for the cog engines when they went up. Takes about two hours. Enough wood. Two hours to get up behind Pepper Sass or in front of Pepper Sass. Or a little thing. Engine. Yeah. Well, good so, why would you that. even want to go up there? It's <laughs> it's a tourist attraction, man. Why would you want to go to the grand? Yeah. You know, why would you want to go to the Grand Canyon or anything like that? It was. It was hey, always I went to the Grand Canyon. Shots fired. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I mean. They have I'm a, saying. Yeah. I mean, I'd go to the Grand Canyon only because they have a train. Uh, yeah. Their train. Wait, wait, wait! I have a Grand Canyon story. Oh. Their steam train is the cheapest train ride I've ever found, guys. How much is it? One hour for fifteen dollars. Nope, I have cheaper. Pretty good. I have cheaper. Uh, uh, oh come on! I the uh, at Steamtown. You can get on uh, for I think seven or okay seven or twelve dollars maybe. But is it steam? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> uh, or you can have to grill. We can steam. We can get take it all day. I'm talking cool. like real railroads here, guys. Not just like Rude. jokes. I know, but the we can have to grill. We can steam it for that. Savage, Jesus Christ. The uh, ball into one operation over a mile of track. <laughs> one whopping mile. I mean, the Mount Washington it's Cog is only three two. miles. And But they have good intentions. <laughs> at, at an average grade of 25%. <laughs> and a maximum grade of 37 point something. It's, it's, a, it's a hell of a thing to get up and, like, because you can walk around the coach. You can't go stand at the platform while the train is in motion, but you can walk around the coach and take pictures and stuff. And standing up on the cog as it's ascending the hill, it's nuts. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, like, I walked to the front of the coach to get a picture, and then walking back to your seat, it's almost like you're falling down a hill. <laughs> all the seat ha All the seats have these big handholds on them. <laughs> yeah. Most people fumble when they fly on airplanes, and like, I'm like, I don't fumble because I've ridden the Durango and Silverton before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's like being on a ship. You know? It's like being on a ooh, ship almost. Ooh, ooh. Mm. It sways back and forth. The DNS is yikes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, what else? What else have we got? I'm I'm sort of just harping on about uh, the places I've been in the past few weeks. I guess I'll talk about the dead blueprints I found online through my interurban car I've been restoring. Ooh. Except for one name, they're in an archive of some description in Portland. Portland, Oregon? Oregon. Oh, okay. These are plans for a crash of interurban cars that were built for Portland Trafficking Company. Mm hmm. And they're really similar to the one that I'm rebuilding. So, if I could ever get up there and have the money. I could get a copy of the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. you! Think the, uh, no, do you think the museum right. could try and sponsor that? How much is the... How much is a copy? I don't know. 
<laughs> I, I still got to talk with some people about that, but Good job, I think though. some other stuff that I've been thinking about doing with the car. Hmm. Okay. And maybe my um, other blog did when I get around to that. Alright. Well, I, I, I love finding blueprints and stuff like that. You know, that's why I, I would have, frankly, I should have asked, like, hey, can I take a look at those blueprints you got of Pepper Sats? <laughs> I wonder if anyone's tried to build, like, a, you know, seven and a half inch Pepper Sass. Oh, I'm looking, uh, hang on, I'm looking this up. <laughs> that would be so weird. Hang on. One eight scale cog railway. Well, it doesn't, doesn't exist. have to do that. But... Well, that's, that's true. I never thought about it that way. Uh, if, if put on level ground on just normal track, Pepper says probably would not be able to pull anything. Because no. she wouldn't have the rack. Because physics. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, guys. No. Oh, my God. What? The term that the most mature podcast ever. Alice should get a point. Alice should get a point for that joke. It wasn't no, a joke. He didn't, it wasn't he didn't a joke. We're just that bad. It's, it's just a way. bad pun. No, we're just not mature. Uh, I don't think there's a seven and a half gauge cog train. That's, I uh, can't find it. I'm not surprised. We need to. Hey, ex- wait. Wrong section. Uh, That's true. Yeah. And we've already yeah. had one of those well, today. You, you asked me to look. You asked me to look it up. So <laughs> well, I didn't ask you to. You said you would. Yeah. I, I, I'm not really concerned. Anyways, uh, yeah. what else then? We 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 didn't figure out what we were doing for. Rah, 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 rah. Well, I. Rah, rah, rah. Rah. I think he means. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't quite time for that, but okay. Yeah. Rip my ears forever. Yeah, rip headphone users. <laughs> Does anybody have any no any noise? Does anybody noise. have any more stuff before? Yes. Uh, Oil and Tracking Company FW1 number 100 has probably pulled a new paint cap. Yes! <laughs> so now, in theory, if Breakthrough Samuels wanted to bring his engine to OERM, he could run out on the overhead. Hmm. So I think they made the poles operational. That's 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 something I want to see because that's just cool. So is it actually time for? <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just looking at the stuff that we have here to to do for locomotive verses, and. There's not too many huge things. Didn't you put a marker here on this one that was like, don't do that until something or other? I just saw it there. Um, oh, wait. Oh, the... Yeah, hang on. Why did I erase yeah. that? <laughs> Somebody should try and send the dock in because b- broken dock. Alright, hold on. I will try you know to send it again. Almost broken. I will send it again again. BMW had a no Trussell fire a few days ago. Where? Oh, oh, Dundee, Oregon. Jeez. Crocodile Dundee, Oregon. I I I don't make up these town names. That gives you the name of the town, Dundee. Hmm. <laughs> Dundee. But fortunately, they have a better fire department than Sherwood, so they got to the fire before it got to the Trussell. Okay, well that's good. Unlike the last time they tried to fight a fire near Trestle. Oh, I, that was the Domino Trestle, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm coming up right now. No, that was the Sherwood Trestle. Oh, okay. Because I remember a while ago a video of some trust coming down, like one support fell and knocked into the next, 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 next. That could have been it. Mm-hmm. But I think that was the different one. Back to I thought that was yeah. like CSS. It works. The dock is fixed. I think it was up. Ooh. All right. Well, but mobile mobile no, slightly breaks it. I'm not surprised. 
Okay, so what are we... Anything else? I rode down the old whale trail. Oh, cool. I need to go out for a bike ride on the Washington Secondary. Huh? I need to take Madison. That'd be so romantic. Hmm. Oh. Oh. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the pack. Well, I mean, because because I've been like... Every every time she's like, oh, I gained weight, blah, 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 I'm like, go for a bike ride. Every time. It's my go-to response every single time. So I should probably take her, you know, take her on a bike ride. Let's go ride a bike up to the highest height. Anyways, speaking of high heights, something. <sighs> Locomotive versus? Locomotive. Okay, <laughs> Locomotive versus. They're headphone users. Right. Yeah. Alright, so what are our options here? We don't have a lot of good options. And frankly, I think some of we, these need to be taken out. Let's we, do we Lee have, versus uh, Cancer. Lee versus no, Cancer. Just get it out of the way. <laughs> Stra Strasburg I, I Blue Dumpster. I, no, we, we no. should do the, the Niagara Blue Dumpster. We did this one, didn't we? Which one? Mm -hmm. uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Have 51? we? Oh, we did. I don't think we have. No, we may not have. But save this I one for Chris. I have the stack of Niagara. Oh. oh, yeah, Milky wants, to, Milky wants to bring it at me. I oh, wouldn't be opposed good. to doing Lee versus Cancer. The Negra. You do that. I found this is gonna be like the O one though. How much coal does it carry? Tons. Yeah, where are the stats for that so I can put it <laughs> somewhere? The stats for what? Cancer? Yeah, the stats for cancer. I know we had them before. They're, they're the ones I, I, I click on the link and they're the eight oh five slash G twenty. Oh, okay. Oh. I thought this was just a link to the picture. Derp. No. No. Okay. No, I, I went went put it into the engine. Hey. Uh, I need to remember which class Lee is. Uh, what was it doing? D and R G W. Oh God. Weibold, are you? Are you? I oh, don't know. What? Nothing. Well, I'm. I'm gonna get wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. It's a Lee. He's old. He's fragile. Um, he's, I'm a fragile. Yeah. I'm a fragile. I'm trying That's to find his number. Fragile. That's down. not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. God damn it. That's not it. There it is. I'm looking for the numbers. Oh, there it is. It's a B-15B slash C superheated. Mm. He was the first of his class. Holy crap. Uh, never mind. I'm not going to say that out loud right yet. <laughs> okay. He's a scared. Cancer, cancer okay. will win. Well, I know Cancer's going to win because Weibold's the one doing it. Hold on. Let me get a picture of both of these. Ahu-ahi, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. I managed to beat 113 with the, the slightly older version of. <laughs> yeah. Link a picture Kramer, of, uh, Kramer, are you familiar with Rio Grande 01? No. It was a 280 that lost its tender, so they made it a tank engine. Oh, I think I've seen it before, actually. Yeah, I managed it's to disturbing. beat the largest 060 ever made with it. <laughs> Let me see. Rio Grande 01. I, I gotta look for this now. Hang on, I'm gonna find a picture of Kane with it. Here, here's a here's a picture of of Lee's type. Okay, I searched Rio Grande five seven. That's not right. Yeah, can I something Rio Grande oh one five seventy eight. Yeah, somebody get a and picture a bunch of cancer, please. And a bunch of pictures of the river just come up. I get. Let's see. Hey, Ohio Rio Museum. My name is Rio. Uh, I get ORM five seventy eight. On one of the challengers with the safety. Oh one God. Of, one of the challengers with the safety stripes. Yeah, man. 
Is this can oh. It's such much. Oh, it's so envy. much cancer. Uh. Look on it, envy. Uh. I'm not envying anything at all. You wish you was this cool. No. To be bolted to the rail <laughs> for some oh, reason. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna build it in Gary's mod at some point. Why? The issue is this cool. <laughs> Need to have the whistle blow. It's like, <laughs> kill me. <laughs> it's the that's the grade crossing. Kill me, kill me, please, <laughs> please, please. Put this here. Yes, that's prototypical. Yes, that's prototypical. Well, how? It's so prototypical. I mean, actually. It's Oh, it's the ski train. Yeah, it's no, the ski but train. they have the heritage unit on the front. So, ski train oh, was around when they what? had the heritage unit. Five seventy eight cancer. Five seventy eight is in the heritage cancer. unit was made in what? When was when did the like oh six I think? Yeah, the ski train ran through oh nine. Oh nice, nice. Wait a minute, nice. why is wait why is this like bolted to the ground? I don't know. <laughs> that's that's one of the strange questions about the cancer. I, I just now. It's actually one of its strengths. It was so strong that to keep it from rolling away in the night, they had to change it. They had to chain it to the earth. They say that when it had a leaky throttle, that's why the earth is on its tilt. Uh huh. Tilted. Yeah. And you know, there just they weren't. Adjusted there, the alignment. Of there the just earth. weren't any seasons before then. Got it. No, no, there weren't. It was always just well. Think about it. Well, you know, Valley Forge, that's all a lie. Is Bush did oh. Valley Forge. It's all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's all a lie. Thanks. You Obama. know why they call it Gorilla Glue? Because Harambe was the glue that held our nation together. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> no. Not Harambe. Not again. Dicks out for Harambe. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> What? <laughs> well, Dicks we've out. really dated this now. <laughs> yeah. Dicks Granted, we were just talking about Kurt the vet. I mean, we gave it. We gave it a date. My bond we, we in fact <laughs> wrote the the date at the beginning of the <laughs> podcast, so the podcast is in fact dated. By the way, a Cincinnati Zoo put out a press release that said, "Please stop making memes of our dead gorilla." <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, that's how you prolong memes by by asking people not to make them. Yeah, it's going Poor to have gorilla. the opposite effect. Poor dead gorilla. You didn't know what was going to come through that door. Yeah, you right, didn't know we, what was going on. Right, can we get to the verses? I, I heard no, that. No, we're waiting. We're remembering Harambe. Moment of silence. Big <laughs> down. And we're moving on. Okay, okay, so who should get the first shot? Uh, uh Weibold. Cancer. 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 God damn it. What is your overall length? <laughs> Rude. <laughs> uh, my overall wheelbase is 51.17 feet. Okay. Uh, my overall wheelbase is... Um, <laughs> 22 feet. Grumble. <laughs> okay, continue. Um, what is your axle loading? Axle loading. Uh, Actually, wait, no, don't, don't do that. I don't have that stat. I read the chart wrong. <laughs> God damn it. Sorry. Nobody had axle loading. Okay, okay, okay. How about, what's your weight on drivers? Uh, weight on drivers is 128,000 pounds. 85,000. Be that guy. Rude. Yeah. Uh, You're small. What's your engine weight? Engine weight, 150,000 pounds. 100,000 even. What is your driver wheelbase? Uh, driver wheelbase is 15 feet even. 12.5 feet. What is your engine wheelbase? 22.75 feet. 19.75 feet. Wait, how is that different than your overall wheelbase? Um, good question. Whatever, carry on. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Don't want to ask that. Don't want to ask What's that. What's your guys' minimum weight of rail? You bastard. 71 uh, pounds per yard. <laughs> 47 pounds per yard. <laughs> God freaking damn it. How much coal do you guys carry? <laughs> um, 10 tons. Tons. Can we can we safely say that I have more coal than he does? I refuse to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. I, hang on. How about the little uh, tube thing on top of the boiler? That's an air reservoir. Pretty sure that's air. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Also, I think that's I have more than you. Can I have that point? Not yet. No. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> because. I might have an auxiliary reservoir. The Grand was good at that. What? Rumble. Mom, stop texting me. <laughs> Alice's mom loves him. What is your driver diameter? You, oh, you really want to ask that? that? <laughs> okay, no. well, 63 <laughs> inches. Okay, 46 inches. <laughs> okay, you little bastard, come over here. <laughs> Whoa. It's time to meet your maker. You to me a little... I just realized this is Lee fighting Lee here. This is Lee fighting the tiny bastard. Uh, hey, all right, let's be nice. let's go. Let's continue. Uh, what? What is? No, yeah. I. It's my ball now, sucker. It's your ball. Uh -oh. That's why I stopped right. asking. Firebox area. Uh oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> this could be bad. One hundred and twenty-five point six five square feet. 158 square feet. Ooh. Yep. This, well, is gonna well, well. this is going to be bad. Uh, great area. 20.4 square feet. 30.30. Yeah. Yep. Ellis, uh, I think you just found the cure to cancer. Evaporative heating service. <laughs> uh, 1629. 1629? <gasps> oh yeah. my gosh. 1446. <laughs> Wait, how why you... is my evaporative heating surf Oh, I might... How did he do that? Oh, 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 I know why! I know why! Why? <laughs> because my firebox is really long and slender, and I've got a deckless cap, so it goes further in, despite having... Oh, my having God. This... Yes! Wah, <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> you will never be... <laughs> Does someone link a picture of cancer? Or is this the cancer we're using that's linked? Yeah, the, uh, the, the cancer is linked. linked. Yeah. 578? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. He's going to otter space. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm kind of curious on this. What is your... Actually, what's your factor of adhesion first? Ow. <laughs> it's 5.05. .05. Oh. 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 Okay, 4.23, and I thought mine was kind of like... Yeah. Me. Yeah. And you know what's the funny thing? These were the last guys in service on the B&M. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, what is your tractive effort? Tractive effort is twenty five thousand three hundred and twenty seven pounds. Dang it, twenty thousand one hundred sixteen. Okay, here we go again. Back to where I was. Uh, I love how the I love uh, how these well, actually, tiny little moguls have like as much pulling power as any British engine. Yeah. Like any super, mainline super British heating engine. surface. Um <laughs> Looks looks at saturated do you, steam. Do you not have a superheating surface? I oh. do not have a superheating. Okay, well I will take I will take that point. Uh, let me check something real quick. Oh, there isn't. They didn't. Whatever. I'll address that later. Uh, combined heating surface. Uh, at, same as my evaporator. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say I, I have uh, seventeen forty eight. Oof. Even then, you didn't beat me by that much, actually. No, it's just because of the superheating surface. Uh, yeah. 7040, evaporating heating, uh, evaporative heating surface divided by cylinder volume. Uh, 230.46. Wow. 169.48. Ha-ha! I'm, I'm impressed. I kind of figured I was going to lose that one, just because of... Well, I should have asked you your cylinder size. Yeah, but you should. I know the answer is not big. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which is why I am not asking that. <laughs> um, not asking that. We know not you're going to come that. back with a style point, so... Not asking that. What is the score right now? 
It's okay. like uh, seven to nine. Yeah, it's seven to nine. Seven to nine. Five, uh, seven, eight. Lee is behind by two. Ratio of driving wheelbase to overall engine wheelbase. Um, point six six. Uh, point six three. Is better? Which one is better? Shorter, uh, I think. Because you can go around tighter turns. Mm. No, because it's the driving wheelbase. He wins. Okay. Because well, that would that would mean there's less weight to go on other things. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It, it means more of your more of your weight, and more of your wheelbase is driving axles rather than just sedentary axles. Okay. Okay. Uh. Uh. Well, let me get this one out of the way. Number in class. Twenty-two. <laughs> Twenty-two. All right. Seventy-eight. Oh, wait, seventy-eight. Wait, wait, wait. There were there were a hundred twenty-two of these. Wow. Well, there were twenty-two Dude. with tenders. Yeah, oh. there were twenty-two oh, G twenties. <laughs> yeah, there uh, were. Well, just uh, and and there was one cancer. Just like there were a hundred and forty B fifteens, and seventy-eight of those were superheated. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's that was the discrepancy I was pointing out earlier. Um, yeah. Which I don't know which one thirteen sixty was. It doesn't say. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, let me continue. Let me continue. Oh, you know what time it is? Oh God! Actually, no. Cylinders. <laughs> cylinders Ow. first. Cylinders first. Um, eighteen inch dia- or eighteen inch bore by twenty four inch stroke. Okay, nineteen by twenty six. Oh, yeah, you won. Yeah. Okay. Right. Taking the lead. Uh, Robert Lamasina's power computation. <laughs> Um, do, 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 do. 2,856. Wow! Do you get something that low? I don't know. I'm looking at the other members of like the similar classes. One of them is 1,027. Oh my god. Uh, 60, 60. Okay. I'll yep. come. I'll come back to this in just a second. Uh, when were you built? God. 1890. Okay, 1918. That answers my question. Oh, well, the originals were built in 1903, and some of them are superheated, I guess. The we built. But either either way, I win. Uh, Although if you're if you're doing the superheating, I, I am doing the that super- counts as a rebuild. So then I can use the rebuild date of this one. So I don't because the class is built in 1890. No, because you're using a specific engine. And I'm trying to use a specific engine, but there's no notes on which ones, you know. Now, a was, single engine can still count as a class, though. Well, yeah. Well, did did five seventy eight ever get rebuilt from cancer? Well, no, but it was a tender engine that was rebuilt into cancer. Okay, but so I could it, use a date that isn't when it was built as a tender engine, but when it was rebuilt into that, okay, which is but, considerably later. But I can use nineteen oh three and still beat your, you know, nineteen. 19- 18 then. If we're, if we're just throwing When, when like was that. the superheating added? Uh, if it is added as I think it is, then a 1918. Okay. Because this was in the mid-20s that this was converted. So then, by that logic, I would win with the rebuild, but you would win with the original build, so wouldn't we push? I I would stand to argue that there weren't any... Uh, advantageous modifications made in terms of uh, pulling power when this was rebuilt into cancer. Um, actually, yeah, a lot of weight was put on the drivers because they moved okay, the tender tanks true. up on the side of the boiler. <laughs> that's true. Which actually Dude. is why its factor of adhesion is kind of screwed up. Locomotive builder, builder. Uh oh. Actually, well, no. no. For, that, Wait. for that one, then nobody wins. Well. I have Alco originally, and then B and M rebuilt them. I have Burnham Perry and Will- Burnham Perry Williams and Company, and then DNRG Salt Lake yeah. Cruise Shops. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh rebuilt. wait, this. Oh wait, this was in Salt Lake. Yeah, Salt oh. Lake had this and the O one. Actually, no, the O one. The O one I've seen pictures of it in Salt Lake and in Denver, so I don't know where it wound up. Hmm. 
which I can't I can't remember they've ran that thing across the system frequently. <laughs> I, I don't think it really went anywhere. Anyways, but... Uh, what's your Valve gear? Valve gear is wall shirts. What? Yeah. Um, mm, do you have a picture of that? Uh, well, you may, you may be looking at the pre-rebuild, which was Stevenson. Okay. Post-rebuild was wall shirts. Okay, fair enough. I was like, um, picture I'm looking at, that ain't wall shirts. Yeah, I, I know, I'm, I'm looking, what, the 1455 that I sent? Yeah. Yeah, actually, that actually stands as proof that they were all originally built in 1903. So, mm -hmm. because that was one of the later numbers in the class. Anyways, yeah, wall shirts towards the end of the life. Okay. And you? Broken. Broken. <laughs> Stevenson. Broken. It was ah. Steven. It was built with Stevenson and was broken towards the end of its life. Great. <laughs> knowing, fantastic. Knowing the grant, it was probably like Stevenson with what? a couple extra linkages, of, you know, a drive chain, and <laughs> some washers. Wonderful. A lot of washers. Okay, so um, let me go back to where I was. I got distracted from Robert Lay Messina, and so same as above plus superheater percentage. Oh wait! I'm gonna yeah. win that one. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just I'll, I'll take that it. one. Uh, just same as it. above, but substitute Screw firebox you. area for grade area. Uh, seventeen thousand five hundred ninety-one. Thirty-six thousand nine hundred seventy-two. Ouch. Yeah. Um, power L one. Three thousand four hundred twenty-eight. Twelve one thirty-nine. Oh. <laughs> you be, you beaten 060 with it, Wybolt. But... Not with this. <laughs> oh, yeah, you beat it with the predecessor. No, no, no just get your style this is the predecessor. Oh, this is just the predecessor? Just get your, oh, get your style before, points oh, ready. This, they built this thing, and then this got scrapped. And then they were like, well, now what? And then they crashed to consolidation, and then they did, then they did the same thing to the consolidation. <laughs> Jesus. Power MT. 266. 630.02. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking you were going to come up with like 13,000 or some numbers. Just yeah, I should have thrown out just a random BS number like, oh, here you go. Yeah, <laughs> to be my 266. Uh, 267. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So, do, do we want to get a call in here for who wins the builder? Built at Burnham, rebuilt in Salt Lake. Built at Elko, okay. rebuilt. It wasn't. At it wasn't built. It wasn't built at Burnham. Burnham oh. Perry Williams and Company was a. a Alco. Give me Alcos. Burnham Perry Williams and Company actually did quite a bit of. Um, they actually did quite a bit of boiler work in the early around the turn of the twentieth century. Hmm. I'm looking at the one next to it. A B nine for the pit for the Fitchburg built in Taunton, Massachusetts. Give like, me Alco or give me death. Alco? Uh, cake or death? Um. Alco. I'm not gonna ask about water capacity. I saw BNSF Alco. Ow. Oh, uh, one more thing to ask: boiler pressure. Um, I don't. I don't favor my odds here. Um. Do you have it? Yes. <laughs> okay. What is it? 140 PSI. <laughs> I was going to guess 150 for you. I'm 200. Yeah. Well, hang, on, hang on. How big are the cylinders? To give you, to give you an idea, 346. I have to okay. give you an idea, 346, which is um, nine years older, has 30 PSI higher. Jeez. <laughs> So right now it's 18 to 9. Yeah. We can do it, little guy. Let's do this. We'll see how this works. We can do it, little guy. Alright, bring it. Bring it? Yeah. Bring it? Are you ready for it to be brung? I have a question. Yes. Do you even have a dynamo? Um. I mean, he, he doesn't have a headlight, so yeah. I assume not. <laughs> That's Probably my question. Not. <laughs> 
I'm gonna take a point for having a headlight and another one for having a dynamo. Hey, no, 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 that's one. That's one, because it's electrical fittings. Think about it, it's a shop switcher. You don't really need one. Well, yeah, yeah. but... You don't and have either of those things. You could, you could have a headlight without a dynamo or a dynamo without a headlight. You don't have either. Yeah. So... Yeah, therefore they're two I might, different I things. I might actually have a dynamo. I, I'm looking right in front of the cab. I think you do. I think I do. Under the little box. Yeah. I don't know why you'd do that, but there's your it's, dynamo. Well, cab light, I guess. <laughs> Congrats. Which, I don't know why you need the cab light if you're, in a yard you know, you're not running at night. <laughs> because you don't have a headlight, <laughs> stupid thing. <laughs> and then put the bell there instead, you know. Yeah. Ooh, on the note of the bell, I have an air ringer. You don't. Ha. Huh. I don't? Where the hell is my bell? Uh, it's behind your steam dome. Oh, okay. Oh, well. I, I have I... an air ringer. So, ha. Huh. Okay. Style um, point for Weibold. His engine is bolted to the ground. That's not a style <laughs> point. No, I'm not counting that as a style point. Um, uh, do you still have doors to access the front? I do. <laughs> or can they can they open? Yes, they can. Okay. Look at them. Okay, <laughs> just see it. Just making sure. Do you? I'm it fairly certain I do. Doesn't look like you do, actually. No, I do. It's just tough to see. Okay. Um, my stairs are safer. <laughs> because for whatever reason I've got this really beefy staircase on the engine. I'm 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 not <laughs> counting that. And why not? I also Safety have a very first. I also have a very large staircase, just in a slightly different place. Yours is steeper also, though. Also my running board doesn't go as high. Actually it may. I think it will. I think your I'm... running board's taller than my stack. That's probably true. It doesn't go as high on the boiler, so you can get a better handhold all the time. Because you don't want to grab the steam dome. Yeah, why not? Well, I figured fittings are hot. Oh, you know. Yeah. Just don't, just don't grab the safety or the check valves because I've grabbed, I've touched a check valve while it's hot before, and I've got like a second degree burn, and it kind of sucked. Great. Um. Yeah. That that was kind of bad. Um. Speak of check valves, however, you only have one located on top of the boiler. I, in true grand fashion, have one on either side of the boiler, which allows you to put in water from two separate guns into two separate pipes. Which means you can put more water in the boiler faster if you need to. Okay. So that's that's a style point. Also, I have. Uh, do I have two dynamos? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I need to get a picture from the other side. The one is the one is off kilter. That's why it surprises me. Yeah. But yeah. A lot of the thing is your. It looks like your turret is right there. What kind so of air? Why. What kind of air compressors do you have? Um, I have two single stages. Okay, I actually have no idea what kind of air compressors I have. That's a single cross compound. I'm wondering if there's one on the other side. Um, it's not typical. Okay. Typically you have them on the fireman's side and on the engineer's side you don't. Okay. I have, you might have more reservoir space, but I have more condenser. Like, look at your condensing coil on the side of the air reservoir. Yeah. That's puny. You're puny. You're right. Yes. But I still have a bigger condensing <laughs> coil. That's true. Additionally... My cut lever is easier to get to because it's not like way up in the air and everything, and I actually don't. And I don't have a tower coupler. What's tower coupler? Tower was a manufacturer of couplers that basically oh. has two drawbar pins, and if both of them don't engage, then the coupler opens, mm -hmm. and they are a pain to couple into. Oh, okay. <laughs> they are uh, a big pain. Hey, can I, can I, can I see your retirement date? Uh, this photo was taken by GM Best in June of 1934, shortly before the unit was scrapped. Okay, well, I'm going to come out and say 1956 as the last steam runs of the Boston Maine. 
1956 is the last steam runs of the grand, but uh, yeah, I'll say this this loses. Mm. Well, the um, style I, point I only... for the fact that I am one of a kind. Yeah, that's true. That's worth it. Style yeah. point for the fact that I have an engine in the series, <laughs> even if the prototype you... isn't isn't quite on the spot. Okay, fair well, enough. Well, this is what he's supposed to be. After after a long period of searching, I finally reconciled the differences between the model in trains, the model that I have, and the real life prototype. And this is it. Okay. Okay. Because none of them uh, agree. Same thing with Bell. But yeah, well, Bell's just USRA, ain't he? No, not in real life. Oh God. <laughs> Um, your brake cylinder is probably located just after the steam chest, as is the case with most modern engines. Mine is under the cab, which makes it easier to get to and maintain. Okay. Style point for Wide World, it's got a good steam whistle. Five chime. Denver uh, Nugger and whistle. I have no idea best. what kind of whistle I had. But, yeah. okay. The NRGW five chimes by foamers, and I don't just mean myself and rear grand foamers. By foamers, Dean RGW five chimes are some of the best whistles there are. Okay, you can I have can that. I have a legitimate question. Hmm. Do you have marker lights? Um, doesn't look like it. Yeah, it doesn't. No, but I do have brackets for them. And considering this is a picture of the engine in the deadline, I probably did. Okay. Because I have I the brackets. You can see on the front of the smart box, I have the brackets and the wires for it. I was gonna say because which then that's what the dynamos for the marker lights. Uh, he has little green candles that they place. Yeah, little green candles that they just. Yeah, there's a guy with a dressel lantern on the pilot. Also, I have a switching pilot. Congrats. I understand that you're not a you're not a switching engine. You're a road engine. Yet it is still safer and it's easier to get on and off of. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I have a cow catcher though. So. I'm not, know. We're not. We're not catching cows. We're locomotives. Well, yeah, but uh, the B and M had a lot of road crossings, and running into something with a cow catcher is better than running into it with well, many other parts of a locomotive. I mean, yeah. you say that, and it kind of just sucks anyway. I mean, it sucks for whatever gets hit. That's for sure. It sucks for the <laughs> engine too. I mean, cow catchers get bent easily. Ninety mm. ones is bent back a little bit, and we don't know what she hit to do it. Anything, literally anything. Yeah, my spring rigging is the older style of over-under leaf springs, which means I don't have equalizing levers, and it's um, double knuckle, so I ride a little bit better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oops, I turned it down one instead of up one. Uh... As well, my reversing linkage isn't as long, so it won't be as heavy. Weight reduction, bro. <laughs> and my air reservoir blowdown cock is easier to get to because it's <laughs> not way up in the air. <laughs> well, actually, it is way up in the air, but it's got a ladder next to it. It's not just, like, hanging above, you know, <laughs> the endless space. Also, I've got three blower input manifolds for whatever reason. <laughs> not really sure the reason for that. I've also apparently got... That's the ash penny. Yeah, I've got steam heat plumbed. Get, get on my level, I guess. I'm. Do I not? Um, I don't because, know. Because these engines ran commuter service pretty much exclu it, it, exclusively. I feel like they would have steamy plumbed. They probably would. Yeah, because I was gonna say like. Green to dark control. Um, yes, Jader. As soon as I get two more points. Excuse me. Okay. Hope, hopefully, I don't fall asleep in that time span. Style yeah. point. You're, you are Denver and Rio Grande, no. the standard railroad of the world. No, I don't so. even say that. This engine, if anything, is a testament to otherwise. <laughs> Narrow oh gauge God. is the true standard. For any... Also, your oh, cap works. does not have sunshades. <laughs> what? I know that sounds really desperate, but I just realized that looking at it, you don't have sunshades. <laughs> Okay. Like, like, look above the window. You see the little tarp thing that folds down, and it's a sunshade. And all Rio Grande engines had it, and you don't, for reason. 
Well, come to think of it, most Wait, of his Um, what's one final thing? Um, I have. I have two standard rear grand three-inch safety valves, which standard, not standard, are larger than any other railroad standard. Most railroad standard was a two-inch safety valve, mm-hmm. and it was also two, so I have more capability for blo- for popping off and blowing down if need be. Mm-hmm. Which is good, because Rio Grande, safety first. I vote yeah. Rio Grande. Snicker, snicker, snicker. I vote for cancer. Snicker, 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 shut up. Snicker, 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 snicker. Snicker, snicker. I would also vote for cancer, but please tell me to blame that to Woo. Oh, I know what you're talking about. No, I the pretty much vote thing. Rio Grande for SP. Yeah. We pulled a reverse. We pulled a reverse Sumter. Yeah, oh. Jader, what do you vote for, thing. Jader? Nick, can we do votes? Yeah. Yes, yes. that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, I mean, I didn't. Never mind. I vote for. Hmm, it's kind of tough. I like both these options. I'm gonna vote for the. I'm gonna vote for cancer. Because it it's something unique. Yeah. And it's bolted to the friggin' No, you need unique New York. <laughs> Still don't know Cancer why it's power. I don't quite get that. What? Why it's bolted to the ground. You know, so the it wouldn't roll away. Strong. Yeah, but why not chop Because it had no brakes. Or chain it through the wheel. You know, something... Oh... Because chaining it through the wheel would be standard practice. I, I get it. Uh-huh. I appreciate it now. Yep. Matt, they are anti a- anti standard. Yep. Yes, we are. So then, dial control so that Jader doesn't fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, once again, I'm not going to launch into my my stuff then because time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, quick thought. I need this in HO scale. Need this. What? What's this? <laughs> and <laughs> but for conjunction junction, what's your I, I saw that and thought it was hilarious. <laughs> like that would be so worth it. Just having you know, because to somebody who doesn't get it, you know, they're not going to get it. But it's not some stupid, you know. Oh, that's clearly a reference to something. It just kind of looks like a weird paint job for a car, especially the coal hopper being O R. Yeah. Wait, and what is it? I didn't get it's, to see it. It's an HO scale. Somebody made the conjunction junction like the and button or cars in HO. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I need I need at least a, co- a green coal hopper that says or on the side in big yellow letters. Just for somebody who gets the reference. Can, or just run them as all one consist. Conjunction junction. What's your function? Okay, now. The country. Oh, the country helping business. <laughs> right. I know, that's Norfolk right. Southern. That's Norfolk Southern's function. Uh huh. I'll let Alice keep the singing to himself. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, as of making this podcast today, I got, or a few days ago, I was poking around on eBay and I found a, uh, I found a Bachman Spectrum 280 with Economy sound. Economy. Yeah, Economy. So, I, yeah, I'm like, Okay, I haven't, I haven't done anything with Ekonami. Let's, let's buy it, see what happens. Came in the mail today when I, uh, or I came home, came in, or it was in the mail. Two days before it was supposed to get here, so. Yay. What, th- thank you, USPS, you did something right. It happens. Yeah. Ah, my foot's yeah. asleep! Nice. <laughs> No, I, uh, I put a couple pictures in the chat. It's beautiful. It is. It re- did you weather it? Yes, I did. Wow. I don't know. You got some competition with Weibold. Wait, what? Why? You have competition with the weathering. Yeah, I saw it's nice. I know. I don't know. Why, why is that catered? competition? I should have. Should I have you do it, or should I have Jader do it? That is the question. But you're oh. against weathering. Yeah, I kind of am. 
Well, then why do you care? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting I'm getting used to it. I own a couple weather Let's cars because some guy died and I got like twenty train cars. Some guy died. Some guy. He died. A, he died of cancer. Uh, and then, and so he was, he was really hanging around because it did because it didn't have a cow catcher. <laughs> He modeled the Missouri Pacific. Sorry, that's terrible. Oh. And see hey, the worst picture I just sent. Where's Kevon? He's Mr. Re- he's Mr. Oh, Re- back. Oh. See the picture oh. I just oh. sent of all the fun delicious cars. I've I'm missing. That uh, runs in her mountain. I'm missing the, uh, whatchamacallit. There's a grain hopper and a observation passenger car that I got that are not there. Okay. Inner Mountain's based in Longmont. Soundtracks is in Durango. Yes, it is. And as well as Blackstone. Seat. Well, yeah. <laughs> Blackstone. Blackstone speaking, models. Well, speaking of Blackstone models. Oh no. Oh yeah. One out of oh, ten would buy Ukonami again. I highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah, well, I recommend it too. Ukonami is well, good of, decoders. Well, well, I put like a close-up picture of the air compressor on this because you can change the uh, like the type of air compressor sound you can have on this what what kind of compressor is that uh, it's a cross compound thank you I need to I'll need to get that program next time I'm uh, the club I, still, I, just, I need to take a picture of all three of my engines together because the easy command can't program for shit buy digitrack Zephyr it's good for you I'm, I'm looking at doing that yeah. me, uh, it, it's out. so good you need large the money that Ooh, I have of money. So I got of, one for uh, free because the guy died. He's uh, like, you can have it. I'm like, okay, I'll take the free DigiTrack system. You said you could have yeah. it. Yeah, I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> I thought he so was dead. Out of, uh, oh. No, well, the other guy who's giving away the stuff, I'm friends with him, so okay, it's all good. Uh, it's all good in the hood. So, out of uh, a company we were talking a lot about a few, probably a f- few months ago at this point, um, out of Scale Trains, we have some new announcements. Yeah. Set to release later this year is the Rivet Counter HO Scale UP Steam Excursion Water Tender in black, which is something we didn't previously have, as well as the um, Rivet Counter and the Operator Series SD40 2, available in. Union Pacific, Southern, Chessy, BN, BNSF, NS, another UP, another NS, CSX, and another BNSF scheme. Um, Kind of perked up when you said Southern. Yeah, they'll also be releasing GATC um, air slide covered hoppers, which are the ones that sort of look like boxcars. And in N scale, they have announced their um, big blow turbine. Big blow. Hey, Jader, don't fall asleep. Southern, 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 northern, southern, northern, southern, northern, southern, northern. People were. I wasn't really paying attention to the to the group chatter, but I'm just in the call and people are talking about whatever, and someone just don't even remember why, just in passing, says the word standard, and immediately I was somebody say standards, and everyone lost it. It's like you asking the other night. So we said something about narrow about gauge stand, as yeah. I opened my phone. Oh, wait, you know what? What about this? Like, do you just have it set to notifications? No. Yeah, I I, I can't find. I wouldn't my put it other... past you that you would. Yeah, no. Well, no. I have some stuff for dial control. Okay, oh, well, listen to you. you. So this oh. weekend. I went to this guy's railroad, and it's pretty great. He models the Chicago Northwestern in Iowa, and yeah, I got to play. Tra- I got to play trains, and Congrats. there's a picture in the chat. The first, the two cars are mine, and I custom made the lumber load. Nice, Whoop. that's good. And then I ran my Southern steam engine. If the video will send, I ran it with a prototypical mixed freight because it's prototypical to see a Southern 260 next to a SD40-2. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah totally. It, it's he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's like, you can run whatever you want. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yay. As long as it doesn't short the layout. 
Oh yeah, I did that a few times because I'm a, I'm like a spaz when I put on cars. So. You know, it's not good. Metal wheels are bad for you. No, they're good for you. Metal they wheels roll. are good for you. They roll. Plastic wheels don't roll for shit. And then recently, I got a Blackstone passenger car and caboose to go with my engine, my hopper, and my box car. So now I have a train, but I don't get them till Christmas. So I have I to wait. Get, I don't get my K fifty nine until Christmas. I'm not getting anything right now. I own too many things. You own too many things, which I'll is funny some. because I was seriously considering when we brought up um, P and W one fifty. I know a company that makes a model of that engine. Alice, oh. I have so much stuff that I can't even find a car that I want to run. <laughs> Wait, what? Just like I, I, I have so many trains I cannot find stuff that I want to run. <laughs> what? Too many trains. I found plenty of stuff that I want to run, but they're all on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> they all sit in my closet. They never come out. Never mind. Right, um... It's so cute. What's this? Oh my god. Look at it. Oh my god. Beautiful. Oh my it's god. got DCC and sound in it. Oh, oh my gosh. god, Wait. it's so cute. I have to send a picture of the cutest engine ever that I got to run. Did somebody... How did everyone see the video of my lovely engine? Steam engine? No, I didn't uh, send. I, it, I, it sent. But. I I'm freaking not, want this. I'm gonna try not to. Uh oh. Here it goes. Here we go. Hello. I, I approve of your engine. It didn't send. It sent. And, and he died. Oh, oh wait, oh. there it is. It's, a, it's just like yours, Jader, and mine. Uh, it's a Lee. Did everyone see my lovely steam engine yes. video? Yes. Why? Why did you vote for cancer then? You own a Lee. <laughs> now I own Bruce, according to Jader. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I like the stock car you have with the uh, moving horses. No. Yeah, it's no. Bachman. No. It's nice. No. I bought it at Train World in New York. It was great. No. It's got history. No. Right, um on a on a not so related nut to train stores. I found out in an email the other day that uh one of the I think three road clubs in the central Ohio area is is, you know, that has the possibility of being uh, sunk, I guess. Yeah. Right. So, the uh, the Columbus Motor Railroad Club they they have this huge. Like, I can't. I I don't think they have a website, or I haven't been able to find it. But they have this huge layout in the uh, in the Buckeye Steel Castings Building out by uh, out by the CSX Parsons Yard, I think. And Buckeye Steel Castings uh, recently went bankrupt. You know, mm. ba bankrupt, sold the property. And... Geez, let me pull up the... My engine is the cutest ever. It has DCC, and it's just adorable. It just needs couplers. It's not mine, but it's adorable. It's big, whatever. It's, uh, my mic. I'm on mic. Yeah, it's on. Right. What are you doing? So the Columbus Mall Railroad Club is pretty much they're they're in jeopardy of kind of you know going under. They're they're good for the next few months, but uh -oh. after that, who knows? Why is that? Oh dear. Because the Buckeye Steel Castings building that they were in. Oh. They went bankrupt, sold the property, 
everything's being sold, you know, sold and liquidated and everything. Ugh. Yeah, and they've wow. been in their current location for forty for over forty years. So, wow. yeah, and it's not like our club where it's a bunch of modulars and stuff. They have this. Let me find a video of it. They have like this huge multi-level, huge multi-level. Uh, it's friggin', it's friggin' amazing. I'd like to go down there at some point. All right. Uh, here we go. Enjoy Wabash by us. No. Here's a video of their, uh... Oh, is this just a, uh, track level thing? Because that's cool. Yeah. This is like, I love yeah, that's these. It. I love these. I'm, to... I'm liking this and putting it in my favorites so I can watch it later. Yeah. I'm so not going to use my watch later. It's a playlist. huge layout. I haven't touched mine in forever. It's still... Yeah, no, I haven't... I mean, it's have so done... outdated. It's so outdated I still have Minecraft crap in there. Huh. And it's not like... Like you know, tutorials on how to build something cool. It's like one of the, one of those stupid uh, YouTubers talking about you know some, you know, oh they're gonna add this in the next update. That was like thirteen year old me. Mm. Yeah, well you know it happens. I have or some it. Minecraft stuff in my favorite still. I have a lot of really old stuff. I don't get rid of stuff. In my yeah, favorite. Yeah. It's just how it is. Alright. Uh, I'll save my Gmod stuff for next week. Yeah, I want to talk about the stuff that happened at the operating session, but I'd like to do it with TJ. I'm going to I'm gonna get off for the night then. Alright, well, just hang around because we're about to finish up here. Yeah. Okay, I'll try. Then we can do our terminations. I'll just put up a stat terrain. Very good. Good. Model where we're being in both doors where we're being. What'd you say? Hey. I'll just go through what I did. Okay. Time. Um, I tested world bed on some of my tracks. So, I, um, yeah. I can be built. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You're building yeah. a layout as well. I, I'm yeah. souped that so many people are putting layouts together. Yeah, um, man. Logan Nakamura would tank stop, <laughs> aka what I call my weed skinning. <laughs> has been full. Huh? The high include 10 3 foot gauge Modu cars, 10 3 foot gauge tankers, a few stock cars, a new skin of Unta 50, a Quidnick Central Railroad SD 80s, and a few 3 foot gauge boots. Wow, you've been busy. Yes. Yeah, uh, you get you get quite busy without internet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, soon you'll be back to unproductiveness with the rest of us. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Please you. Jesus loves you. Please you. <sighs> All right, Is so it time else? for the train to terminate? Da, 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 da. I think so. <laughs> I think most people are going to fall asleep if we don't terminate here. So, yeah. I'd say so. I, I would like to have you know done this earlier, but stuff happened. I was on, uh, I was on the moon. You know, it's just eating how dinner. Work. Oh yeah, well, well, Milky wasn't here for most of that, anyways. Yeah. Well, I was. In spirit. Well, you you were in spirit. I got to finally achieve my biggest dream of being on the terminus. That is a really Yay. lame dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, thank you for being on the terminus. Yeah. It was good. I enjoyed it. Cross, okay. cross that off the bucket list. But rip sleep and school tomorrow. I'm I'm Mr. Bucket. Toss your balls on my top. I'm so glad <laughs> I didn't start school for another few days. Yeah. Well, anyways, let's start.
Uh, let's start not school. Yeah. And Weibold will terminate on track one. With um, <laughs> sigh. I saw this and just sighed. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I, yeah. I will leave that in the cargos for people to find. I like big injunctions again. Not lot. Can't do it. <laughs> All right. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways. Wow. Uh, I am here to announce that the videos will be coming back to my channel, going back to the regular schedule. Maybe tossing things around a little bit. My outro is not going to be perfectly up to date, but uh, I'm going to try to get back to doing videos all five days, five or six or seven days a week, or you know, however many days a week I do videos these days. So that means uh, there should be a portal episode coming out today, and then locomotion, and then whatever the hell I do on Wednesdays, and then zombie <laughs> train, and Factorio's coming back, and all that jazz. So. Uh, anyways, that will be that. Uh, I appreciate you guys for sticking with me for these, like, two weeks-ish that I've been gone. Things have been kind of hectic. I was all over the place. I was in Boston. I was in New York. I was in New Hampshire. I was all over the place. So, thank you for bearing with me, and we'll re be returning to our previously scheduled program. Jader? Hey. Oh, shoot, what up? It's that train. Also, if you're wearing headphones, or, yeah, if you're wearing headphones, please turn or turn down your volume, or you'll kind of you'll go deaf. Okay, Graham. <sighs> um, uh, my dream is now complete. May the phone be with you. <laughs> Amen to that. And Milky. Whip my hand. Now nah, you're fine. All right, we'll be back in two weeks with more slow railroad news. See you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.